Hey everybody, how's it going? So, <clears throat> last time I made a video about the kind of hate that Nikon gets online. Uh, and I got a lot of responses. I got a ton of responses uh, about competitors doing this, or maybe some use cases aren't as good as the, as the other competitors like Sony and Canon, which are all fair messages, right? But I made that video because I personally felt that uh, there is some there is some injustice to this to this amazing hundred year old organization, which, to be honest with you, wasn't listening to the customers for a for a fair bit bit of its time, but now because of its mistakes, it has realized that that it should listen to its customers. So point taken on that, and thank you for all the messages. And by the way, if you like my videos, please consider subscribing. Uh, liking my videos, um, I, what I do, the value that I bring to this conversation is I try to be, I'm not a big YouTuber, so I try to be as honest as I can, sharing my personal experiences as I, as I use the cameras and as, as I do photography. Now, let's get to the point for today's conversation. Let's continue having the conversation about this amazing camera, the Nikon, the Nikon ZF, right? And I still think it is one of the best cameras that I've used so far. But I was watching one of the good YouTubers that I, that I, that I follow, FramesTM. And in that, he mentioned about this camera being for artistic people. And I cannot not disagree with him. I mean, I agree with him. <laughs> I cannot disagree with him. That's the point. Because this camera, in all its form, fit, and function, looks, feels, and acts like a device that a creative person should be using. Right from the color, right from the colors that this camera has, external colors that this camera has, it looks very nice in the hands. I have gotten multiple compliments on this one. People have looked at this camera and said, oh, wow, that looks like a pretty good camera. Now, Fujifilm is equally good, but it can't cover as many genres as this single camera can cover. But I'm going to talk about that. I'm not going to do a comparative analysis. That's not the intent of this, uh, this, this video today. But this camera, I believe, is an amazing camera for a creative person. Form, fit, and function. Um, imagine having the Nikon Z8 and 95% of the Nikon Z9 feature sets into a small body performing for you. Um, that's a big deal. That's a big deal at the price that it sells. It's already a hit in the market. It's not available. I check my cameras, camera stores, Adorama, etc. Uh, online stores have them, but they're saying, but they're shipping, but they're taking some time to ship the colors that you want. If you want a, a a black colored camera, you can just go ahead and buy it anywhere. But I didn't like that color. I'd rather have colors to, to one of my cameras. So again, yes, I completely agree with what Frames said was that this camera is um, is for the creative person. So good job on that one. Thank you. And I love your videos. I follow them as well. Now let's come back to the crux of the conversation today. The, cr the crux of the conversation, the context of our conversation today is all about how you can use manual old AIS lenses on this camera and be able to get autofocus on them. I do this quite often. I'd like you to I'd like you to use that as well. Now I have a lot of old Nikon lenses, the good ones actually. And uh, what I see, the difference that I see is the modern lenses focus more on sharpness. Fairly, and that's a fair fair thing that they do because with digital sensors, sharpness has become very important. But it's not about sharpness all the time. It's also about getting the nostalgic nostalgic feel. It's also about getting the story out in the picture. And that story can be in a black and white image. So sharpness does matter, but you know what? You're missing out on the color. So I guess modern lenses may not be able to perform at that point of time. So again... <laughs> What I notice is that the modern lens, lenses, they tend to focus a lot on the sharpness. Now, sharpness is not that important. 
especially when you're photographing a female client, the sharper you make the, her face, the more they'll dislike you. <laughs> make it beautiful, make it pretty. Sharpness doesn't matter. Maybe the eye sharpness matters, but I don't see it that way. I mean, at least in my experience photographing ladies, I didn't, I didn't see it that way. Uh, it doesn't mean you make it hazy, hazy. Make it not super sharp. Okay. Back to the point. The benefit of using these old AI and AIS lenses. Now, this is the 135mm f2.8. It's an AIS lens, and it is one of my favorite lenses. Let me show you how it looks like. You see the barrel right there? That is one of my favorite lenses. I shared the images last time with you. And the nostalgic feel that you get out of these uh, AI and AIS old Nikon lenses is not comparable i mean you, you can't you don't get that out of any other any other comparable brand nikon used to be one of the best lens makers back in the day their lenses are still good the formula that they use in the lenses are still good um, this as an example is the 20 mm this is a 20 mm 3.5 i use this lens quite a bit that's how that's how big the lens profile is the 20 mm 2.5 now that's how small this lens look like looks like it's a perfect lens to be used on the <coughs> zf but this lens is not autofocus it's manual focus the manual focus rings the aperture ring all of them can be moved but what happens if you are used to autofocus and you want to keep using these lenses that are not expensive and still be able to autofocus on, on, on the ZF. That is exactly what I'm doing with my other favorite lens, which is the 50mm f1.2. The new 50mm f1.2, as you all know, is very heavy, very big. To me, it's unnecessary from a price and a quality standpoint. I would rather choose to use this old 50mm. See how good, see how awesome this glass looks. That is one of my other favorite lenses. And uh, I use this quite a bit. I had this on my D750 and I used it, although I had to use it manually, which I didn't like. But with the ZF, I can now autofocus this. And I'm gonna show you today how you can autofocus this lens as well. So let's talk through that, okay? Because that's the con that's the crux of the conversation that we're gonna have today. Towards, towards the end of this conversation, I will be sharing some pictures that I've taken with this Voigtlander 40mm. Now, that's the lens profile. This is the Voigtlander 40mm f1.4. This is also a manual lens that I use my adapter to convert it to an autofocus lens and I'm going to show that to you. This is what we are going to talk about first and then we'll jump into the Nikon, Nikon lenses as well. Now, this lens, I have used it and back in 2018, I won a street photography award. Um, taking street photography, I think I was in, in Las Vegas, Venetian at that time. Um, so it, this lens has already paid off for itself with that one image. But that's the point of this conversation today. I want you to look at this and uh, see how you can autofocus this on your ZF because that's where the biggest bang for the buck comes. The way I autofocus it is by using an adapter and this adapter is the Tecart Pro. And this one is the TZM or TZM, depending on where you are in this on the on the globe. TZM02. Now it has all the contacts, electronic contacts. So, so it does pass the information back and forth from the lens. Now the way it works is that this adapter, which is rigidly built, robust built, what it does is it has its inner barrel and as light focuses on the imaging sensor, which is also the focusing sensor. And remember in the DSLR days, we had two different sensors, one that used to focus and the other one that took the image. With, with uh, uh, mirrorless, you got rid of that other sensor. 
uh, and the image is focused and captured on that same sensor right now. So with all those cross points that you have on that on the sensor, the images images are captured and uh, and then focused and captured on the same same sensor. And that's what this adapter uses. What it does is it moves four to four to four point five millimeter back and forth, and within that range especially for smaller lenses, within that range, it's able to focus from infinity to pretty close, like two feet, two to three feet away. Now what you do is you use the TechArt TZM adapter, TZM02, go for the 02, that's the latest one, adapter, and you take this Leica M mount lens and sit it on top of it. So that's the final profile. That's how it looks on. Uh, that's how it looks on. Once you set this lens, what you want to do is you want to change the aperture. You see those aperture settings? Change the aperture to the lowest aperture setting, and move this barrel, the second one. So that one's for. So this one's for the aperture. This one's for the autofocus distance move it to infinity okay what you want to do is you want to keep this on infinity and let the camera do the rest of the focusing for you now i'm going to show you how it works on on my zf so this is my zf and i have a native nikon zf nikon z 28 mm lens a lot of people are buying the 40.f2 lens. I don't see the reason why you should buy a 40f2 lens when you already have such a fantastic piece of Voigtlander glass. 40f1.4. Guys, go buy this combination. Use this adapter. I would highly recommend that you buy this lens and this adapter to use with autofocus on the ZF instead of the 40f2 lens that Nikon is selling, which has been so high in demand after the ZF was introduced that uh, I don't think it's available that 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 easily these days. Um, I had it. I had the 40 f 2.8. Sorry, 40 f 2 lens. It's a good lens, but I didn't see the need to keep it because when you compare it to this, see that that's the profile. Pretty much the profile. Of the f2.8 same thing and pretty much the profile for your f2.0 the only difference that you'll see is is the 40 f2.0 is lighter than this white lander but again white lander glass is is amazing as it's com it compares with Leica so you can't really compare it with the 40 um, <clears throat> with, the, with the 40 from Nikon okay so now, I usually, in one of the videos on the other YouTuber, I forgot his name, I, I, he, he's, am he's amazing, he's an amazing YouTuber as well. Um, let me see if I can find his video. But what he had suggested, yeah, Omar Gonzalez, I, I love his videos. I watch his videos more for the fun <laughs> rather than the review, but he's, a, he's an amazing photographer as well. So in the other video, what he had suggested was um, that you use that you use a, a very thin, if you can see it. What you can use is instead of using any of those uh, AF area modes, just use the WC one with a thin strip, thin small strip in the middle. What it does is it helps you figure out among the crowd helps you helps you figure out exactly where you want to focus because if the if the camera sees multiple eyes over there it's going to pick up the one that it thinks it it thinks it, it's the closest. But if you use a C1 with a thin strip, you can actually make the camera focus on that person in that group um, or that object in the group. So I'm using that. Now the way it works is, let, let's take a look. Um, you will see this barrel move, so focus on this barrel. So as I auto focus, right, you'll see the barrel move. 
So as it sees the a distance further up on the wall, it's picking up that object. In my case, it's a it's a clock. And as I bring it back to my keys, it's going to focus up that way. There is a slight bit of hunt hunting, but overall this adapter is amazing. I would I would highly recommend that you use this adapter to convert your manual fo focus lenses into autofocus. Now, this is something that we spoke about the void lander lenses. What about Nikon lenses? So the older Nikon lenses. Let's take the example of. Uh, of this 50 mm lens, right? 50 mm 1.2 lens. What I do is I use a Gabal adapter to convert from Nikon F. So that's a manual adapter that, that, that has no contacts, nothing. What it does is it converts the manual, the, the F mount Nikon lens to an M mount adapter, M mount lens. So you can take this and put it on your Leica. But what we are going to do today is not put it on the Leica. What we are going to do is take this off and you use this adapter and put this adapter okay? and that's how the profile looks like. And with this change, let me switch it on, with this change you are actually converting your lens into an autofocus lens. Everything including eye autofocus, uh, subject autofocus, all different types of autofocus works. Your in-camera vibration reduction works. Uh, the lens vibration reduction would not work because again the VR isn't in the lens but it just works. It's an amazing lens. Go take it out. I, what I'm going to do after, right at the end of this video is start putting in some, some images that I took using, using my Voigtlander lens. So today I have pictures coming off of the Voigtlander, but I also have some pictures that I want to share with you. Um, that I want to share with you with this 50 f1.2 lens. Now this is a perfect uh, lens for portraits. So instead of you going ahead and buying a 50 f1.2 from Nikon, the latest Nikon lenses, why would you even do that? Just go ahead and buy this lens, buy the adapter, start using it. Um, now one thing I'd like to tell you is uh, this adapter works very well in good light. Very well in good light. This room is dark. You saw it hunting. In dark light, it's not the best adapter. What I do is I convert it to a manual lens at that point of time, and I manually focus. With um, um, I, I usually use blue as, or a red as a peaking color, so focus peak, use focus peaking at that point of time. So in dark light, it's it's not the best adapter, but in good light, you're getting some amazing pictures uh, from a manual lens. So again, enjoy. I have a lot of manual lenses. Uh, my favorite ones, like I told you last time, was the my top favorite, my, my best lens for, for portraits is the Voigtlander 50mm f1.2. My second favorite len lens for portraits is the Voigtlander 58mm f1.4. I'll do a video on this one up there very soon with my ZF. My walk-around lens case is either the 28, which is very light and I like it, or this white lander. This white lander gives me a lot of flexibility. I just love it. You'll see the pictures and the kind of quality that pictures produce in the next few minutes. With that being said, I'm gonna next video I'm gonna take you to location and we will shoot a genre. Could be could be birds could be dry leaves in a jungle or it could be we might end up doing some city cityscape photography
but whatever it is i'm going to take you on location and we'll go from there thank you my friends have a nice one hopefully you enjoy the pictures at the end of the video um do enjoy them let me know what you think like subscribe come back to my channel i always love you if there are any questions i can help answer with my zf let me know all yours talk to you soon thanks bye